Tony and I reviewed the new Lumix S1 Mark II and the S1 Mark IIe and the differences were a little bit confusing so if you're wondering what the differences are I'm going to go over them so that you can decide which camera is right for you. First of all we have the price which is I think is the most obvious the S1 Mark II is $3,199 US dollars and the S1 Mark IIe is $2,499 US dollars so it's more affordable price point. For the sensors, they're both 24 megapixels. Um, their total megapixels are a little bit different, 26.8 versus 25.3, but you won't usually see the image quality difference, the resolution difference um, in good lighting. We took these studio pictures, I zoomed in, you couldn't really tell the difference. There will be times when you can tell the difference because they are different sensors, the readout speeds are different, and so I'm gonna also go over what that means for you practically. One of them is the electronic shutter speed performance. The S1 Mark II can go up to 1 16,000th of a second, and the S1 Mark IIe can go up to 1 8,000th of a second. So you get a stop more with the more expensive camera. Um, I was going through when this would be applicable, when you might need a shutter speed that fast. When I reviewed my own pictures, I had some at this fast shutter speed of 1 16 thousandths, um, but I was using a base ISO of 100, um, a super low f-stop, f1.7. I had no ND filter on me, and I was shooting a car show in full sun where I wanted that blurred background um, without the highlights peaking. So there was an application. There might be more for you. I, it's just not something I've really run into. Um, so one eight thousandth of a shutter speed is probably gonna be fine for most people. The frames per second is different. The S1 Mark II has 70 frames per second. That's a lot of frames per second versus the 30 frames per second of the S1 Mark II E. 30 frames per second is still a lot of frames per second. Um, for the 70 frames per second when I was testing it, it was incredible, of course, for capturing like really super fast action. If you want that decisive moment, like maybe a ball hitting a baseball bat or something like that, maybe the exact moment a bird hits the water, you have something specific in mind, I could see that you would use 70 frames per second. Um, you'll want to keep in mind that reviewing that many frames can be really cumbersome uh, in post. So 30 frames per second might be enough for you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the buffer when you're using those super high frame rates. So the S1 Mark II, you get 180 pictures. It starts buffering at two and a half seconds at 70 frames per second um, versus the S1 Mark IIe, which is 180 pictures. You get six seconds. Uh, with this faster processing speed, you're going to see some advantages to the S1 Mark II. One of them is rolling shutter. The S1 Mark II barely has it, whereas the S1 Mark IIe has about three times the rolling shutter. If you don't know what rolling shutter is, we have a whole video about that. Uh, basically, it's like you're panning fast and there's action and anything straight is going to be slanted or, um, you know, if you're, I once was shooting a hummingbird and the wings got a little bit distorted. If rolling shutter, not having it is very important to you, you might want to consider spending more on the S1 Mark II. Neither of them have blackout when shooting. I saw that in the rumors. They gaslit me. I was like, did I not notice that? I tested both cameras. Neither of them have blackout when shooting. Um, let's talk about video capabilities a little bit. One thing they talked about was the dynamic range of both cameras. The S1 Mark II has 15 stops of dynamic range in video, uh, and that's with the dynamic range boost on. Uh, without it, it's 14 stops. The S1 Mark IIe has 14 stops. It doesn't have the dynamic range boost. So if you're shooting log video, um, if you're shooting outside the studio, weddings, things like that, you might want the S1 Mark II so that you can go in and you can um, grade your video and have more control over it. If you don't use log or shoot in controlled lighting or video is not your specific thing, you might not care about any of that. Let's talk about the dynamic range for stills. Um, this one is interesting because the S1 Mark II is a more expensive camera, but the S1 Mark IIe has a little better dynamic range, about a stop better. We haven't been able to drag it into our raw processing uh, software yet, so 
those results are still going to come. This is just kind of like a preliminary result. We're still working on things. This is still a little early. For ISO performance for both cameras, um, they both have a base ISO of 100. They both have dual gain sensors, which basically just means, like if you look at here normal, the base ISO is 100 for the S1 Mark II. It dual gain kicks in at 800. It kicks in at 640 for the S1 Mark II. That means that you're going to get cleaner pictures at 640. It reduces some of the noise when you start dialing up your ISO. Uh, let's talk about slow motion capabilities in video. For the S1 Mark II, you have four times slow mo at 4K. That's 4K 120. For the S1 Mark IIe, you have four times slow mo in full HD. That's 1080p 120. If you shoot in 4K all the time and you absolutely want that, then this is going to be a great feature for you in the S1 Mark II. Or if you want to shoot action wide in slow mo, like we had skateboarders, and you want to be able to crop, then you might want the resolution of the 4K 120. If you're fine with 1080p, I, I usually am, then the S1 Mark II E could be fine for you. When it comes to battery life, they're about the same. The S1 Mark II E does a little bit better. That makes sense. It has fewer capabilities. The SEPA ratings here are showing like, 350 images. I don't know what how they test this. I didn't see this at all. Um, shooting in 70 frames per second, I got like 180 pictures right away. And of course, the battery didn't run out. We shot all day. The batteries did seem to go pretty fast in these cameras, but you know, you got way more out of it than what this suggests. Who should choose which camera? You might choose the S1 Mark II. If you're a video professional, you shoot in vlog, you really want control over your video. Uh, if you want the maximum dynamic range while shooting video. If you're doing sports and action photography, you want that 70 frames per second or even 30 frames per second without rolling shutter, or if you don't want rolling shutter in your video. Um, if you're shooting regularly and challenging lighting conditions, I'm hearkening back to my time at the car show when I was shooting at F17, ISO 100 in full light, then you might, you'll get that extra stop without an ND filter. You might choose the S1 Mark II E if you're primarily shooting stills, uh, you're doing action, but you're not that worried about a little bit of rolling shutter. Um, if you're not doing a ton of video. Also, if you want better dynamic range, it's also the more budget friendly option. So that's something to consider. You might be able to get an extra lens with the money that you save getting the S1 Mark II E. That's not even all the differences. There's a lot of material in here. I think that that covers the big parts of it. I hope that you choose which camera is right for you. If there's something that I missed, let me know in the comments down below. We'll have more videos coming up so you can give suggestions on what you'd like us to test in these cameras. Thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.